Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. This is also gonna be just a short, sort of a freestyle video, but I was flipping through the channels earlier, trying to find something to watch, and Shutter Island came on. And I'd only seen it once before when I was in high school when it first came out. So I was interested to see um, all the different aspects of the movie that stood out. And what really stood out to me wasn't really the crazy people, although it is a good movie. Um, but was the asylums and I'd kind of dabbled in this research before but never To the point that I got enough information that I felt like I should share it So I decided to dive back in and that's when I found the first Asylum was actually in England and it was uh, this place right here um, Which doesn't look familiar now, but today it's known as Bedlam and Another thing that's super interesting to me is I've heard the word bedlam probably my whole life and I even knew what it meant, you know, I knew that it meant kind of someone going crazy, you know, mishaps, uh, uncontrollability, but I did not know that the actual word bedlam derives itself from the insane asylum, the first insane asylum in the world that was created in England. So as the narrative goes, at least what we were told is that this asylum was created after England suffered a defeat from the Turks. Um, at the time, they say that these asylums were known as almshouses, alms being basically donations given to the church that the church says they're going to use for poor people. But even in the narrative that we're given nowadays, it says that this first bedlam hospital, this first bedlam almshouse in England was created so that the royal family could regain funds after they were defeated by the Turks in the 1200s. And we all know that the Turks could have, um, you know, many ties, the Ottoman Empire, Tartary, all those different things. So that was already interesting to me. Now I decided to hop back in and look more into the history because, you know, you have this being 1200 and then a huge lapse where there isn't a lot of discussion about almshouses, insane asylums, anything like that. And this kind of lends to the narrative of a reset or of the Middle Ages maybe happening more quickly than what they're accredited. I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to get too uh, radical with it and get kicked off the YT. But look at the inside of many of these alms houses and then look at the exteriors and you can see even in these photographs from the late 1800s that a lot of these asylums and alms houses appear to be hundreds of years old at least a hundred years old when the narrative is that you know as far as these photographs are concerned none of these places should be over 50 years old um I mean, the doorways themselves, you can see stairs were put in just to make it believable that the entrances were created for us. These all, um, at least in America, were given the idea that they were built so big because of the Kirkbride plan. And uh, Kirkbride was basically a psychiatrist. A, a renaissance man much like someone who gets credit for stuff that he shouldn't uh they say that he designed all of these asylums in the same way so that they would be these long attached corridors that kind of um l off you know angle off and they say he created all of these because we needed to house the mentally ill and they needed to all be in one building and they needed to all have access to sunlight while still being in their own rooms separate from one another. So that's the reason that we're given and that is how and why all of these, every single one of these massive Kirkbride asylums was created in America. What's funny is we didn't have crazy people or we didn't have enough of them insane people until after the Civil War to require these sort of buildings. So what was the Civil War to those who were not fighting in it and why did it cause them to go crazy? 
Furthermore, upon reading about the creation of these Kirkbride asylums in the U.S., it says that before these Kirkbrides were created, that insane people were just kept in the bottom of businesses, locked up, and in jails. But when the jails were full, if if basically it says if if you were deemed to be crazy by enough other people, they would just take you and lock you up in the basement of a building basically like the gimp in pulp fiction so uh, i mean the history here is always convoluted for these buildings but especially for these asylums uh alms houses if you want to call them that i'm trying to give you all the different terms you can use to look them up the kirkbride asylum is the one that is attached and has, has corridors that are, are, are leveled off it's it's like a very um symmetrical looking building design one that you would be hard pressed to find people who would either be able to recreate it today or who would want to because it's such an extravagant and elegant design and then on the inside of all these asylums they're basically they're all finished in marble there's gold everywhere the the backyards or you know the acres and acres of backyards are, are all courtyards and ponds fishing areas um, fully completed forests that are basically man-made and designed and yet many of these places don't have roads going up to the front and don't have accessibility to the doors and different things like that where the door is just like off the ground like five feet up and there's windows that go right into the ground and just different things of that nature where there's certain aspects of the buildings that 50 years after they're supposedly built are, are completely, you know, perfect. And then 50 years after they're built, they still don't have roads and they still don't have accessibility and whatnot. It just makes you question the narrative of what these almshouses really were. You also notice a lot of these are built with um, the same sort of 
I don't want to call it tech because like I said, I can never prove any of this stuff myself, but they're all built with a lot of uh, stuff that we see on other buildings that lead us to believe those other buildings had different purposes. Um, this huge, huge asylum just has uh, this doorway that seems to lead nowhere but into the ground. I'd say 50 to 60% of these buildings built with the red brick that we know and love. Well, 90% of these don't exist anymore. So you can look up old mental asylums and there's hundreds and hundreds and they're pretty much all this extravagant and beautiful. But you'll see the red bricks, you'll, you'll see tunnelways into the ground and arcs that lead into the ground. You'll see windows into the ground. You'll see domes on top. You'll see the, the pillars and the metal and the iron and the antique Watek and different things that we can't really give an explanation for. And finally, I want to talk about this bad boy right here. This is the Seacliff Asylum in Seacliff, New Zealand. And this was the largest building ever built in New Zealand at the time. It was built in the late 1800s as far as the narrative goes. And basically, this castle, this palace, which kings and queens of the world would be jealous of. I mean, I really enjoyed looking at the asylums of the United States and uh, of the old world, but talk about extravagant. This is probably one of the craziest buildings I think I've ever seen. And the fact I'd never heard about it before and it's so well hidden and tucked away in the history of New Zealand really blows my mind. Now, they're saying that this was built to house all the rowdy homeless and mentally ill of New Zealand at the time. I'm not too familiar with the history of New Zealand, and I'm not sure what was going on in the late 1800s, but besides the uh, reset that we see going on around the world, I'm not really sure what else could explain the creation and or inheritance of a building like that. Now, as the story goes, in 1942, somehow it caught fire and a lot of it burned. And then by the 1970s, it was completely demolished um, and covered up to the point that all that remains is this. And literally this. There's, there's one piece of uh, block from the building and the rest of it is gone. So... Another interesting thing that we did with these insane asylums is we either repurposed them later, uh, tore them down, and put lesser buildings in their place um, that were serving the same function. Or, like this one in New Zealand, we completely covered it up and are trying to erase the history. 
So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next.